And it has already charted across the nation. People are listening. Uh, he is the it boy for our music industry right now, and he's in the studio with us this afternoon. Hello, and welcome to the show. How's it going? Thanks for having me, Wendy. Good I, to see you again. Good to see you, too. Lots has happened since the last time we spoke. Definitely, yeah. I feel like I've, I've come a pretty long way and just enjoying the ride, you know? Now, talk to me about, about this album, because we actually haven't had a chance to talk about this. This is a release that you put out specifically this summer to hit that summertime market. Tell me, tell me about who the producer was, where you did it, all that. Uh, I, I did the whole CD at Sound Park Studios. Um, Jamie, Jamie Folds produced the whole CD. You know, did the whole CD at Sound Park. It was just a great experience. I think the goal with this CD was definitely to be less regional. I mean, the last CD was kind of carried a lot by the, the We Are an Island song, which was really regional, and that was the point of it, and, you know, that's why people liked it. But this CD, I just feel like, you know, people can enjoy it everywhere, and that's why I love it so much. So I'm really excited about this project for sure. Now, the Something About Summertime song has that wonderful summertime feel. It's very accessible. Mm -hmm. um, was Were you going for that? Were you saying, look, I, I don't want to just get the hip-hop audience. I want I want everybody. Like, how how did you get so many people into that? Well, I feel like I've come a long way as, as a vocalist, you know, I mean, I take voice lessons every week. So um, the singing thing, I mean, between all of us right now on, on Main Street, I'm going to say that wasn't even supposed to be me singing. You know, I co-wrote the song with Dylan Guthrow and Dave Sampson. Dylan Guthrow was supposed to be singing, you know, and we have our own our own version and stuff like that. So um, there was just some complications with Dylan being, Dylan being on the song. So he told me to go ahead and just give it a shot myself. And uh, it ended up working really well. So I feel like the singing on the song is a big part of like reaching more audiences and the way that the the rhythm of, of the, the rap verse is kind of more melodical and it kind of catches people in a different way. Then, you know, it's not, it's obviously not a rap song or a hip hop song. I, I don't think it's more like a hip pop song. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And um, it's so. obviously caught the ear of people off island and farther away. You have been added to a, a pretty important station in Southern Ontario. Tell me about this. Yeah, well, um, I just recently won the uh, Canadian Emerging Artist of the Month contest. It was hosted by a, uh, a station in Wallaceburg, Ontario. And I mean, I won with 63,000 votes and I wasn't even, I was kind of really taken back by that. I was like, how did, I don't even know. I'm just, I'm, I'm just freaked out about it. But it's, it's really crazy and, and it's amazing. And, um, you know, making that connection over there is, is obviously really important. And uh, it, it, it goes even further than that. Like it's, yeah. Well, the geography, for people who know radio, they, they look at the station and then they look at the reach. Right. And the geography of that station is important because it reaches into Detroit. That's a Canadian station that broadcasts to Americans. Right. So what does that mean for you? I mean, a, a hip-hop artist getting exposure in Detroit. Well, it's just a lot more a lot more heads turning, hopefully, a lot more ears kind of perking up and a lot more people looking my way from different places. I mean, the last time we spoke, that's one of the main things that I said to you. I just want to like the music to go as far as it can go. So that's, that's really amazing for it, for it to be over there. Do you know where those 63,000 voters came from? Do you have any idea who they were? I or? mean, my fans were kind of, were going crazy. Obviously, you know, the Miss Chicks you're familiar with. And of course, my friends and family, I mean, that's a given. But my fans were just like, up all night like some of them I got to tell you this story some of my fans were actually voting so much they got blocked from from voting they would get blocked and they were tweeting me like pictures so once they got blocked they sat in the room and they made signs that said vote for Kyle Mischek on ZXFM like the, the website and stuff and then they went out on the streets and like held up these signs for people to like go and vote for me like that's that's how dedicated they were they really wanted to win that and I don't think anyone expected it to get that crazy with all those votes coming in from the competitors and stuff so I mean we we brought it you know but I mean people dream about that kind of fan mobilization exactly yeah it's I mean it's crazy I'm still I'm still getting used to it I mean since my last voice show I, I really realized wow this is like pandemonium like these people really care about me and they really want me to like succeed and they scream really loud and I mean it's it's I'll probably never get used to it. Uh, talk to me about how you have been able to get to your fan base without the help of a major label what what media what are you using to do to get there? Uh, social media is a big thing you know Twitter, Facebook, Instagram um, I just really connect. I talk with them, you know, they'll tweet me something and maybe ask me a question. I'll answer their question. Um, I just really talk to them. I'll, I hang out with them, you know, when they come to my show, especially my CD release party, it was just like, come hang out with me for the day. And I was just, I felt like I was just making new friends, you know, I would just go sit with them and we would all just, just chill, you know, and that's really important to me. Um, like, how many people on your Twitter? How many people on your Twitter list? How many followers uh, do you have? I feel like just under like 2000. I don't check yeah. it. 
maybe like 1800 almost 1900 i yeah. guess so that's yeah. fun so that's a lot of people yeah yeah um at, talk to me about um how you got a celtic color stage because i love this story <laughs> Celtic colors, yeah. yeah. Um, well, they, anyone who I guess books me goes through Andrew, yeah. and uh, they contacted Andrew. And what I'm really excited about was performing with Ashley McIsaac. And I mean, that lineup in Celtic colors, I mean, Celtic colors is actually just the, one of the most surreal things I like, ever. It's just an amazing experience. So to be a part of it and, you know, uh, share the stage with Ashley, and uh, we're going to be performing some songs together, that's just going to be like crazy that's just like a dream come true you know a lot of people are talking about the next thing in in cape breton music and we had ali bennett in the other day and he said look at the singer songwriters look at look at what the singer songwriters are doing and he actually included you oh. in that category nice and and i i think that's i was going to ask you I how you feel about that. it because being included because it by strict definition of the term i'm pretty sure if somebody asked you kyle what do you do you would not say singer songwriter or would you uh i would that's a tough question. I think about that actually all the time. If someone, when someone asks me like, what do I do? I just, I, I mean, I, I definitely would, would say I'm a songwriter. I write a lot of songs. I write, you know, and co-write like all my own stuff. Um, a singer? I mean, I work at it every day. I just, I just feel like I, I like just saying, you know, hip hop artist or just artist or musician. I mean, the CV post referred to me as a musician. Like that was the first media outlet that ever did that. And I was like really excited about that. And I put it like on Instagram. I was like, they called me a musician. Yes. So, I mean, it's all, I'm just flattered by by everything. And I, I really try to be the best musician, the best singer songwriter that I can be. So if, if you call me that, that's a bonus. But I would, I would refer to myself as just an artist. And you have a Savoy show. And that's a, that's a turning point for people. When people get their Savoy show, Definitely. that sends a signal to the community that you need to be watching. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Savoy is such a famous venue, the Savoy Theater. Um, and people have been asking me, when did tickets go on sale? When did tickets go on sale? Because I released that, that promo video. Um, I don't know if you've seen it, but... The, the show's November 22nd, and I just found out on the way here, tickets go on sale Monday at 9, 9 a.m. on Monday. So if you're listening, go tweet it. Tell all your friends. Tell your mom. Tell everybody <laughs> Monday, 9 a.m. That's when tickets go on sale. So I'm really excited about that show. I mean, it's all about progression. The last show was amazing. Um, everyone had a blast. It was, like, one of the best nights of my career so far. So this one's just only going to get better. Uh, a lot of people are talking now about, you know, Kyle might be... Kyle might be the one that becomes the next Justin Bieber. I mean, this is this is not sort of people going, people who are in the industry mm -hmm. and know this genre and know what you're capable of are saying, this guy could be the guy. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for that? Uh, I think I'm ready. I, I mean, I think I'm ready. F I, I don't know if it's about being ready. I don't know if anyone's really ready. You know what I mean? But I'm excited. Um, I really hope so. I, I mean, that's... It might be too much. Like, if you just look at, like, people like him and what they go through, it is pretty crazy. But at the end of the day, they make, you know, really great music and send a really inspiring message of, like, what young people can actually do and, like, what... I mean, obviously, he's he's a great artist and he's an inspiration. Um, and if I could achieve that, then... I Yeah, definitely. I think, you know what? I am ready for it. And I uh, I welcome it. All right. I hope it happens. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle Mishik, talk to me about Smoke Show and we'll play that for the people.